see, ordinarily, I'm not supposed to come home to discuss this matter. But I'm here because I'm a member of this family. And what we are talking about concerns your son, Vincent, who is my nephew. You see, I recount that I have been home three times because of this matter. And I want to tell you that if nothing concrete comes out of it, I will not come here again. Now, what did he say? Thank you, my brother. Thank you for showing such interest in my son and my family as a whole. God in heaven will always be with you and your family. Now to your question. My wife and I have talked to him the way we could. We even involved some of our king's men the last time, but he's stuck to his gun. No, he's stuck to his gun. Vincent, you stuck to your gun. Now let me ask you this question. Why don't you want to take up appointment in my company? Why? Chief, I've said this before and I'll still say it again. Mom, leave me alone, please. I am not going to work in your company if it means working under your son. No, 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 don't take my son out of this. My question is, why don't you want to work for my company? Why? Why don't you want to work for me? Why? Chief, I am three years older than your son, Emeka. He studied engineering and I studied business administration. Although we graduated at the same time. So, how can you make him your executive director and me, ordinary assistant general manager? It won't work. Me, stay in your company and take orders from a boy that calls me daddy. No, chief. It won't work. You know, he's my first son. And I had to keep him very close to me, to understudy me. So that he will eventually take over from me. Himself, yourself, and my younger son will eventually take over the company. I had to send you to the university to read business administration. And when you graduated, I appointed you the assistant general manager so that you will understudy the general manager and eventually take over from him when you must have gotten everything right. What will your second son Uche become when he graduates? Oh, he will take over from uh, Mecca and uh, uh, Mecca will take over from me. Three of you will now be in charge of the company. <laughs> I said it. Mom, Dad, did you hear it? He, Chief wants me, your son, to perpetually stay under his children. God forbid it would happen. Chief, my father here made the mistake of staying under your shadow. And this squalor of a life is what he has to offer. God forbid. I will not make that same mistake with your children. Chief, I thank you very much for seeing me through school. Thank you so much. Vincent! Vincent, come back here! Come back here! Am I to take it that you are in support of him insulting me? Eh? God forbid. How can we support this? Then why didn't you say or do anything to stop him when he was ranting? Why? Why? Now listen to me, both of you. You will regret this. Look at me straight in the face. Look at me very well. <laughs> you will regret this. Mom, Dad, go inside the house. Don't worry yourself. I am going to prove Chief Oguchi wrong. I'll tell you, Vincent. 
How dare you talk to my brother like that? How dare you insult me like that, Vincent? Eh? I am sorry, Dad, if that is the way you see it. But that is the way I feel about it. I am going to raise my own capital, start my own business, and prosper just the way Chief did. And he's going to be alive to witness it. How do you intend to achieve that? Eh? By locking up your certificate and then becoming a palm tree climber the way you are now. Anything is better, Mom. Anything is better than tying myself to the apron string of Chief and his children. Anything is better, Mom. How much have you saved since you came back to the village two months ago? How much? I may not have saved much, but I believe that I am making a good start. Vincent, I beg you. I am on my knees begging you, Vincent. Please, go back to the city. Even if you don't want to work for Chief, you can always stay in his house and look for another job. Remember what he said the other day, that he's ready to allow you to stay in his house. And he can even help find a good job for you through his connections. Oh, mom. Anything that has to do with Chief, just cut me out. Unless he's going to make me the executive director of his company. Edward, let's go. Right inside of me, I feel you Edward, if you don't follow me out of here, I will fire you and hire another climber that will be helping me in our plantation. Now, do you remember that that plantation you are talking about belongs to Chief Oguchi by inheritance? It belongs to my grandfather. Who died 19 years ago, leaving that palm plantation for his first son, who happens to be Chief Oguchi. Have you forgotten that? My mind is made up. I will not walk with Chief Oguchi. Simple. There are a lot of fruits on the palm. Um, see what I'm going to do. Hmm? Go down, down, and start from there. Let me start from here. Hmm? Uh, Vincent, can I talk to you? Go ahead. Is it true what your father said? That this plantation belongs to Chief Oguchi? Yes. Is it also true that he agreed to accommodate you in his house in the city? and even help you to get a job that is if, if you don't want to work with him. I don't want to have anything to do with Chief, except he wants oh, to... Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, um, do you have any problem with him, or have you ever had any problem with him or any member of his family since you were born? Not really. Then why are you showing all this hostility? What makes you think he's better off than your father? Because your father is not quarreling with him. I haven't said that. You have always implied it ever since I met you two months ago. You have. Edward. My father dropped out from school after his primary education just to allow my uncle finish his secondary education on the insistence of my grandparents. Instead of him stopping so that my father can complete his education, he accepted an overseas scholarship. Knowing fully well that my grandparents will spend a lot of money in that scholarship program. Thereby not allowing my grandparents to foot the bills of my father. He came back after some years and opened a company and took my father alongside with him. Four years later, 
my grandfather died and he sent my father back to the village immediately. Ah, Vincent, but your father told you and I the other day that he was the one who decided to come back to the village to take off your grandfather's uh, properties. He even said that uh, Chief Oguchi tried everything possible to stop him, but to no avail. Vincent, your father said Chief allowed him a 10% stake in the company. And I even remember, uh, yes, he, he, he said coming back to the village remains one decision that he regrets still today. I remember all that. What do you expect him to say to convince me to become my uncle's slave? Vincent, you're taking this thing too far. You are. This same man you are antagonizing is the same man who built the house that your parents are living today. Free of charge. Vincent, it's this same man. It was this same man who paid your school fees from nursery to the university. And is he paying your sister's school fees? Vincent, Chief is still paying your father 200 thousand naira allowance every month till today my brother a man like this can double your father's stake in the company and give it to you once he's ready to retire i mean not you, you run it with the children not as if uh, it's a joint but you own it imagine a 20 percent stake in a multi-billionaire company imagine what it can do for you vincent edward you're only assuming it and I don't want to live a life assuming things just the way my father did. I am going to build my own destiny. And I have started doing that. Then do it well and do it very well, my brother. Listen to your parents. Friend, go back to the city. Put your degree to good use. You were not trained to be a palm tree climber. See who is talking. You sound too educated yourself to be one. Why are you here? Tell me. Why are you here? Again, you've just refused to discuss yourself with me. <laughs> and that says it then. Listen, let me warn you. Enough of that advice from you. Enough! Let us do what brothers say. Shall we? I'm moving down the other side. I don't know. Beautiful, adorable daughter. You look every age angelic. <laughs> Thanks. Come and give mommy a hug. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the girl is so beautiful on you. Thank you. Where did you get it? Mom, what? Are you kidding me? Okay, everything I'm wearing from head to toe. A part of the things you and dad gave to me as a birthday gift. To in our last vacation at the Bahamas. My dear, how can I be so forgetful? Mom, you're getting old. <laughs> Don't mind me. Oh, my dear, truly, my daughter, you have a body that justifies every fashion expense made on you. Oh, really? Mm. Hmm. Olivia? Yes, Mama. You know, I've never seen this dress on you ever since you had them. 
Anything special you're keeping from mommy? I know we were going to get to that very soon. <laughs> <sighs> okay, mom. Mm. Well, mom. I decided to heed your advice. Forget everything about my broken relationship with Roti me and put everything behind me and move on. Good. Therefore, I have got a date. Hmm. This is good. It's a good news. Do I know this man? You no, you don't. Anyway, he's coming here to pick me up anytime from now. So, Olivia, anything interesting about this man? that you ought to share with me? MIT trained petrochemical engineer. He came back into the country from the States a few months back and now he runs the oil servicing company that he set up before he left. That's about it. You know, any other thing I get to know about him, I will let you know. Hmm. I know you will. Hmm. Interesting story though. Olivia. Yeah. How long have you known this young man? Um, two weeks. Well, everything I told you about him is hearsay from his cousin who was an old cosmate of mine back when I was in a university. I, I really don't know how far that is true, but I mean, the whole essence of this date is just for me to, you know, get to know him better. Now, my dear, whatever thing you have to do to get to know more about this young man, you have to do it quickly. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Because hearsay is no basis to build lasting relationship. Okay? Yes, ma'am. And meanwhile, for a person getting to know her man better, you are overdressed. Mom? Yes. Look at you. You seem, you seem to dress to impress than to investigate. Really? Yes. So I will advise that you tune down. Dress down a little. Okay? Okay. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, dear, how are you? You're welcome to my yeah. home. So, this is where I live. Okay. Uh, Shall we? Is there no one in the house? I mean, um, your parents, some sort of um, relatives and your siblings. Uh, of course there's someone at home. Why do you ask? Uh, I would like to be introduced to them. <laughs> okay. You will get to meet my parents. I would also love to meet your parents, but first of all, I'd like to meet you. So, shall we? So, I don't understand. I'll explain in the car. So, uh, let's go. If I remember correctly, our itinerary today was to chill somewhere cozy for a few minutes and then go over to the movies. What, what are we doing in an office complex? Um, yes, that's my office complex. You said something about both of us meeting each other before you can introduce me to any member of your family. And I'm not going to let that to take too long. I want to introduce you to me, to myself all round. First, where I earn my living. Mm. So shall we? 
Yes, we shall. I just be fine. Wait, you by my side. Oh, life is magical. Yeah. With you by my side. Life is beautiful. With you by my side. Oh, our life is magical. With you. You mean? <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, thanks for the humble appreciation. <laughs> um, Obum? Sir? Is the cook back? No, sir. I don't know. So let's celebrate the moment. Let's seize the time to make you better for hours. Cause together we will be. Let's hope this moment never ends. Once again, you're welcome. Um, I would like to take you to every nook and cranny. <laughs> that would be necessary. I'm sure there will be a next time. Oh, for sure, there will be a next time. Absolutely, it's not comfortable when you get to some history. Thank you. So, what do I get you? Well, just a few minutes of relaxation and then we go back to our scheduled date. Aha, uh -huh. we're already on our scheduled date. You said this is the cozy place I promised to hang out with you um, before taking you to the cinema. Except you don't consider it cozy enough. Uh, of course not. No, not at all. I mean, it's a dream home. Uh, but uh, 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 uh. No buts, huh? So uh, what do I offer you? Anything soft and chilled would be nice. You got it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Cause you the world I cherish. Hey, you the world I never ever want to let go. Yeah. Life is before. It's you by my side. Hello? Emeka, what's up? Why? Emeka, I am on a date. What happened? Emeka, what is that? Is he, is he back? Emeka, what is wrong? I, I should come home. Okay, just calm down, okay? I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm just going to leave right now. I said I'm coming. Yeah. Look, I've got to go. What happened? My brother just called me. He said I need to come home right now. I don't know. He sounded very agitated. Look, I've got to go. Uh, wait, please wait, drop wait, me. Wait, wait. Um, just, just calm down, okay? Please. Calm down. Uh, shall we? Okay. Okay. Please, thank you. Who is dead? He has finally wasted his life. <laughs> it's Vincent. What? Vincent fell off from a palm tree and he died at that spot. What, what are you talking about? What? Vince? Dad! How did this happen? Daddy, you gave me your words that you were going to do everything. 
anything possible to bring Vincent back to this house. How did this happen? My dear, I tried to make it possible, but Vincent bluntly refused. Uh, honestly speaking, I tried my best. Huh? What he did was to roundly insult me, telling me that uh, I wanted to enslave and impoverish him like I did to his father. The worst was that he was doing these things and the parents were there, they did not say or do anything to stop him. <laughs> to grant it all, he walked out on us. I was so annoyed I had to rush back to this place. And I hadn't even stayed up to three minutes before my phone rang and the father gave me this sad news. <sighs> I tried my best. We all tried, my dear. Yes, you did. You tried your best, but I did nothing. Vincent died because of me. I mean, what was I doing here? Why, why didn't I just go to the village to talk to him? I said that because of me. It's because of my stupidity. Oh, you just stop this. Don't. You don't have to blame yourself for this. You know the cause. I am. What was I doing here? Why didn't I go to the village to talk to him myself? I was doing absolutely nothing. And you tell me it's not my fault. It's my stupidity that killed it. He died because of me. He died because of me. Because of me. Please come now. Tell everybody. I'll go and talk to her. Did we even expect anything less from her? <sighs> she has been so attached to Vincent. Right from her childhood. <laughs> Just come down, let me go and speak with her, please. Dad, it's okay. It's okay. Sorry for not acting fast to save you. I failed woefully as a mother. Since your father is still obviously blind to everything, which is shown in his refusal to avenge you, he said, I am going to end it this night. show their feelings in action, not with words. If you're not less affected, act and avenge your son. He was diabolically killed. Avenge him, avenge him, avenge your son. He's your only son, avenge him. God forbid that I will do as you want in this issue. Oh, Gucci's hand. It's not in Vincent's death. I will not allow you to push me into doing something that will destroy my family on that account. Never! Get ready to bury your son and your wife. 
Stop it. No, stop it. Stop it. Stop eh? it. Leave me again. Oh, leave me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I will okay. not stop. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I will do as you have said. Come down. Yes. But you must first convince me that Oguchi was responsible for Vincent's death. Why do you think he killed him? You will regret this. Eji Kandoluchi, you will regret this. Those were the very words of your brother before he left here this morning. Eji Ken, are we not regretting it now? Eh? All his life, you can accuse Vincent of anything but erratic and shallowness of character. Have you asked yourself why everything suddenly changed since three months ago? A university graduate with a sound result rejected an executive offer by the very man that paid his bill through school in a multi-millionaire company and instead chose to become a palm tree climber. <laughs> this even refused the offer for another job elsewhere. Our son was not greedy and foolish the way you think. He was teleguided into his doom. He was teleguided into his destruction by the very man that teleguided you into abject poverty. <laughs> he did that to you years back and today. The whole world is blaming you and I for lack of foresight. Tell me, AJK, are you short-sighted? Eh? Even without the amount of formal education that Chifo Gucci has, is he more visionary than you? The truth is that he is not my husband. He only used you. He employed diabolical means to tie you to his apron string, to hold you and your household bondage and under his own household forever. Having succeeded with you and I, he has not done to our children. Look at his son, Emeka. Now, where is our own son? Dead, killed by him for no just reason. Look at his daughter Olivia, a first class degree holder. And our daughter, for the past six years, she has been struggling to get a degree. Oh, everybody, including you, have started blaming. Greed and foolishness for Vincent's tragic death. <laughs> Who knows what the blame will be when it becomes Clara's turn? Yes, it will sooner than later be her turn if we continue to do nothing. If Oguchi does not just aim at making us poor forever, but childless. <laughs> you said I want to push you into doing something that will destroy your family. Which family? Ah, Gucci and you family. 
What manner of family, AGK? <laughs> he killed your son and made your daughter look wayward. Rise up, AGK! Rise up and fight your dead of this family! I beg you! Stop him from destroying us! Calm down, everyone. Calm down. She is now conscious and very stable. It could have been worse. How do you mean? You see, um, she suffered a very serious nervous breakdown when the news was broken to her yesterday. That was why we couldn't come yesterday. She spent the night in the hospital. Blame her. She and Vincent we are so close that sometimes people think they were siblings, not he and I. <laughs> okay. I know that my God is never asleep. He will never see my tears and do nothing. Of course, eh? he will surely dry your tears. God is the ultimate comforter. He will surely console us. Ejike, <sighs> hmm? Oluchi and Clara, my family and I understand how you feel. We share in your grief. In fact, it is a family tragedy. Though we will not see Vincent again. But I want to assure all of you that myself and my family will always be behind you. We will never abandon you. Today, we have been shattered by death. But by the grace of God, we will overcome. We will pick the pieces and forge ahead. If anyone wants to cry for Vincent, let the person go ahead because Vincent deserves to be cried for. But let 
the person not cry forever. Or like people who do not have hope. Vincent tried his best to better his lot and that of the family. He left a legacy. A legacy of hard work, which we will all help him to preserve. I can see that you are coming over the death of your friend, Edward. Well, what can one do, helpless as we are in a situation like this? Mm. The first time I came here three weeks ago, I came because I was made to understand that you are the person that is very close to Vincent, my nephew. I came to appeal to you to help me talk to him, convince him to leave the foolishness he was into and uh, return back to the city and be useful to himself and his family. Uh, you promised me you were going to do that, didn't you? I did, Chief. I did. But, but Chief Vincent, Vincent was... You see, my daughter feels that we did not do enough to convince Vincent not to do what he did. She felt so bad and it's even affecting her. And to tell you the truth, I'm even feeling the same way. Edward, you seem to me like somebody who is very educated and intelligent. Is there anything I should have done which I didn't do? Am I to be blamed for what happened to him? Oh no, Chief, Chief, not at all, not at all, Chief. Shouldn't I have allowed him to become the executive director, at least to keep him alive? Uh, Chief, Chief, you didn't foresee what happened to him, did you? Chief, the only truth about human existence is that both the rich, the poor, the wise, the foolish, the good, the evil, we are all slaves to destiny. No matter how we try to change it, deny it, fact remains that at the end of it all, we live at the mercy of destiny. Vincent lived and died a victim of destiny, Chief. So will you and I. Chief, destiny is the ultimate decider of man's reality. You, you don't have to blame yourself. You don't. You did your best. Thank you, Edward. Thank you. Hi. Vincent. Um, Edward. Chief. Like my nephew Vincent, you sound so educated and enlightened to be doing what you are doing in the village now. In fact, you should be doing something better than this. Edward, you are not from this village. Who are you? Who are your parents? 
Anyway. I don't even want to know where you come from and, or who your parents are. I have made up my mind concerning you. I stood aside and watched Vincent slave and died for his destiny, as you said. And I'm saying never again. Tomorrow, myself and my family will be leaving for the city. Pack your things, you will join us. Chief, I, I, I do appreciate this, but I, 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 I can't... If we are really slaves of destiny, Edward, like you say, we must not always live in tears and hardship. We can at least live in dignity and comfort if we cannot change it. That's the way my family and I are doing it. Pack your belongings, you are joining us tomorrow. Destiny can never disappoint us What we make of it is only ours to decide Let's make this time a time of a life Let's watch this time go by Right inside of me, I feel you Last night when I was talking to you about your brother's involvement in the death of our son. You said you didn't have some time to think about it first. From what happened to his daughter today, do you still need any convince you on that? Oluchi, that is a very wicked insinuation to make about that girl's honest grief and suffering for her cousin that was like a twin brother to her. Eh? You are beginning to scare me. What are you allowing your grief to turn you into? Oluji. My son has risen to fight for himself. That is the meaning of what happened today. Olivia did not just fall. Vincent struck her down. She didn't just faint. Fine. Good. Let the dead rise and fight their battle if there be any. Then walk. Shame on you. Shame on you. Instead of doing what your father should do in a situation like this, so that the, the spirit of his dead son can rest in peace. Vincent is rising to fight for himself, doing your job for you. Shame on you. Please, Oluchi. I am still feeling like an idiot because of the unguarded utterances you and I made when Oguchi and the family were here. Eh? You, you, you talked me into it. And I will never, I will never allow it to happen again. Change the topic or stop talking. Or I will leave this room for you. I knew it. Hey, I knew it. When he, when Chief Oguchi took you out, pretending to be talking to you, that he was actually charming you so that you would become a worse fool. <sighs> hey! Chief Oguchi's boy. Have you polished his shoe for him today? What about his underwears? Have you washed them for him today? Have you set food on the table for Chief Oguchi? Have you done it? I am asking you, Eddie Kemowa, have you cleaned his room for him today? Where are you going? No, don't go. Come back and tell the whole world what you have done. Bye bye. Bye bye. Too shy. Olivia. Clara. I was told that few days after Vincent's funeral, you were asked to go back to school because your exams were fast approaching. Why are you still here? 
Uchi called me last night and when I asked him about you, he said you have refused to leave this room since you came back from the village and that you really ate. He said that they also hear you cry every midnight. How do you expect me to hear this and still concentrate on my studies, dear cousin? Vincent. Who's a part of me? He meant everything to me. How would he go just like that? Everything in life has just lost its meaning. Nothing means anything more to me. <sighs> Vincent was very close to you, yeah? No one disputes that. But he's my biological brother. Now, what do you think you're doing by mourning him like this? Or are you trying to tell the whole world that we don't love Vincent? That we are less affected by the death of the only son of our family? Oh, come on, Olivia, stop that. That's not fair. But if you want to hear the real truth here, the real truth is that you are overdoing it. Oh, come on and be real. Jesus. 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 Je Clara, did you just accuse me of being fake? Out of my room. Get out of my room! Out! Get out of my room! Get out! Oh. What happened, Clara? Why is she shouting? I told her things in black and white. That's why she's shouting. <sighs> Don't you think that upsetting her in this her present state is dangerous, Clara? Oh, no, 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 ma. I am a psychology student. And in some emotional cases like her own, the best therapy is to jolt the victim out of it with some hard, harsh, spoken truths. That's what I just did. And by the time she will be done crying, I believe she will be fine. Or she'll end up hating you beyond measures. Oh no. Oh, Olivia is a very intelligent girl. I know she wouldn't do that at all. At all. Good day, uh -huh. uh, I am Mr. Andy Obidike. <laughs> Mr. Andy, welcome. Thank you, ma. How are you? I'm fine, ma. Who is he? Mm. Um, he's Olivia's friend. Her phone was ringing earlier in the day, so I picked it, and he was the one on the line. I told him. Uh, Uche, oh. show him Olivia's room. Thank you, ma. He was the one Olivia had a date with on the day we heard about uh, Vincent's death. Mom. That was their first date, and the tragic news wouldn't allow them to complete it that day. You didn't even ask her if she would like to see this man before you invited him over. I understand our desperation to help her out of this present mood. But come on, mom. She hasn't even introduced the guy to Ross. This is a girl that is still struggling to get hold of her self-esteem after her eight years with me crashed. Just five months ago. It's, it's, it's okay, Uche. It's okay. Uh, that guy doesn't look irresponsible anyway. Let's just see how, how it goes. I've had so much 
for one day. I just want to be left alone. Olivia. Olivia. Called you here. Yeah, to come and see if I can help light up oh, the dark tunnel of grief you've, you've locked yourself in for the past one week. How could she? How could she? Oh, oh, oh. She would have to explain this to me right now. Oh. Look at me in the face. Look at my face. What do you see? The face of a friend or that of an enemy? Olivia, I am your friend. I care about you. We may not have known for too long. But that does not remove the fact that my feelings for you are running deep already. I'm not going to ask if you share such feelings for me. Leave this room with me. Let's face life together. What has happened? Has happened. You can't change it. Ask yourself. If the guy were here now, will he approve of what you've been doing to yourself for the past one week? Deep as I was told, his love for you runs. Yeah. Or will he? Life is beautiful. With you by my side. Oh, life is magical. You by my side. <laughs> Life is beautiful. <laughs> You remember I applied for a straight PhD in the University of Toronto? And then I was rejected and I had to petition the school. And as a result of that petition, they invited you over to Canada to come and do a written test. Yes! So what happened? Okay, fine. I just got this mail. Look at this. <laughs> Dad, I have been cleared to do my PhD in deterrence and strategic studies. <laughs> Look at this. It's right there. Oh my God. Congratulations. Thank you. That's my daughter. <laughs> oh. So they need to go and tell Rebecca right now. Yes, I have it. I'll see you later. Thank Bye. You. Jesus Christ! Oluchi! Ah. 
What are you doing on Vincent's grave by past midnight? Eh? Sleeping. Sleeping in the open like this? And on a dead man's grave? Oh, Lord, she. Okay, talk. Come, let's go. Leave me alone. Leave me, don't touch me. I will never sleep on the same bed or under the same roof with a man who is too weak to avenge his mother's son. This grave is going to be my bed. I will continue to sleep here from today. Even when it rains, I will sleep here. Well, if you want me to stop, then do something. Do something. Otherwise, I will sleep here and die on my son's the grave. Leave me alone. Oluchi. 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 Leave me! You are turning this into blackmail. And it is unfair. It is not fair at all. Not Why? fair. <laughs> Did I just hear you say fair? <laughs> the only thing that is not fair here is your decision not to do anything to avenge Vincent. So, leave me. Let me sleep here and die on my son's grave. Leave me alone. Go inside. Never. Leave me alone. Now, stop shouting. It's late into the night. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Now, listen. Oh, Kent. I promise we are going to See the native doctor you suggested in three days' time. Oh? Oh? Can we not go in? Are you serious? I promise you. Dead serious. I promise you. Dim no lumo okay go. Let's go inside. Dima no. Don't, don't do that. I mean, that can only be your handiwork. So don't act like you're surprised. Because together we will be. Let's hope this moment never ends. Come on, Okuni. Maybe someone is trying to surprise you. Surprise me. Olivia, will you marry me? Now, 
Mom, what's going on? No, it's okay. It's okay. Both of you inside now. It's okay. Please just come. I'll talk to you. Okay. I am happy. Just I'll talk to you, okay? Have you known this young man? Dad, we love each other. That is not in dispute. What I will not accept is the speed with which he's pushing you into all this. It's making me very uncomfortable. Dad, he only just proposed to me and I accepted. It's not as if he has fixed a date for anything yet. You accepted? What does he do for a living? Where is he from? Who are the parents? I mean, how much of his past do you know? Dad, I admit I don't know all those things. But with all that you've said, and with this recent development, I'll do everything I can to make sure that I get to know him better. Yes, honey, I will help her in that regard. Until that happens, I will not give my consent to it. Dad, please. No argument about this. Look, I'm sorry for the way my father reacted over the news of our engagement. But from the way I stand, I don't think that he's totally objecting to it. I think he just, he just thinks we should take things slower. You know, I should take my time before I make such a, a huge commitment. You think your father is right? Yeah. Come on, baby. Do you really believe in love? I do believe in love. I do believe in family. I believe in customs. Obviously you've made up your mind to do everything in your father's way. I understand. So what do you want me to do now? Let me into your world. Let me know who you are. Let me know everything about you. I mean, first we can start by going to your village. I get to meet your parents. I mean, not just your present. I want to know everything about your past. So that I don't have time for that. Okay. I mean, let me meet your relatives. You know, your friends. Your associates. We don't have time for all that now. You're traveling to Canada in a week's time. Hey, we are not getting married immediately, are we? I... I wanted the process started before you travel out of the country. Forget it. <laughs> Listen, whether or not my father had objected to this, there was no way I was going to get married before getting at least halfway into my PhD. And that's in about a year. The spirit of vengeance and ancient angel of the night have accepted your petition. You are given three options. Killing them 
with poison, in which case only you can administer the poison by yourself. Or killing them through thunder or eliminating them through motor accident. Tell me, choose one and it will be done now. Um, Adrian, hmm? the poisoning option is not acceptable. We can't carry it out. We can do it. And why? The thunder blast option is too dangerous because our people cannot bury a thunder blast victim until the chief priest has told them what brought about that such death upon him. In that case, the chief priest will expose us. I think the accident option would be better. But not the way my wife requested it when we come here. How do you mean? She said it was my brother that killed my son. <laughs> Uh, of which I still have my doubts. <laughs> and now she is requesting that uh, the entire family be destroyed. Uh, why? Why should she be say, saying that? When it was only my brother that she needs to be killed. His family should pay for it. All of them should die. It's only, my, bro it's only should, my brother. Be, all of them should die. It's only him. Why should he only die? Eh? He why must all of them be he killed? He killed my only son. And not all of them die. All of them not all of them. Why should not they die? All of them should die. Who will be soon on? Are you not afraid of the gods before you? Make one more noise and you see yourself dead here. Please reach into an agreement on who and who to be killed. And tell me it will be done. Ajahn, kill all of them. All of them, kill them. Kill only my brother. Kill all of them. It's them. only my brother that should be killed. Ajahn, kill all of them. Only my brother. Why should he, Why should he be everybody? He killed my son. He, ah, kill, kill all of them. Only my brother. Ubli Bishunan. Take inside that parcel is a powder of monitoring spirit. Put a tiny amount of it into a bowl of water. Then call the name of the people you wanted to be killed. Three times they will appear. Then teleguide them into a vehicle with this charm. Once the vehicle is in motion, sack them with this charm. Once this is done, the vehicle will crash in such a way that there will be no survivor. Uh, Ajahn, please do it for us here. No, you have no agreement on who and who the victim should be. So it is only two of you that can do it now. And let me warn you, if by any reason you do it without proper agreement, someone will survive the accident. And whoever does it can never be killed ever by you again. Have I made my point clear? But, Adjani, I, I you said... We... I said go. I've made my point clear. Go! Go! Amala, amala. Amala chukunjele no amala 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 kamuja ga amala 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 chukunjele I say that is it Godfather I must admit that she and her father have completely thrown me off balance and that is why I have to call for this meeting we need to re-strategize immediately. I told you. I don't do local jobs. Chief Obi, the godfather of 419, does not do local jobs. I told you this from the beginning. But you, you will love it. We're all ranting. I need her in my
my days in the university. Her father is a billionaire. Oh, she just broke up with her boyfriend of many years. All we need to do is hook her up with Andy. After setting him up to make him look like a Ritony business executive from America. Once they hook up, he will fast forward everything, gaining her trust and that of her family. And once they get married, Andy would use her to introduce her father to this big business deal that he just landed. The old man will be manipulated into investing millions of dollars in this business. And once that is done, Andy will disappear with the money and we will all share out. <laughs> Fantastic. But I warned you, it is more likely to fail than succeed, didn't I? I did it and almost succeeded in America. But for the club fight that got me into trouble with the authorities when I was about to cash out. We all will be enjoying the money now. That was America. Those people are greedy and quick to trust. That is why we duped them so easily. Andy, in this part of the world, nobody, nobody, nobody becomes a billionaire by being nice and naive. You hear me? Olivia may be naive, but her father is most certainly not. How long do you think it will take for him to know that the cars, the houses, the offices you are using are all mine? Beside Andy, my wife and children are returning soon from the UK. How much time do you think you have to clean this all up? How much time? Godfather, I think I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Since Andy has gone this far with them, I think even without him and Olivia getting married formally, he can still manipulate her father and then launch our deal before it becomes too late. Plan I drafted and let's see how to implement it. There is still hope. See you, Andy. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful years the lies ahead of you. Cheers. 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 Mm. Babe, congratulations once more on your engagement. Thank you. You've said that like one million times. <laughs> but babe, that was rather too fast. Babe, honestly, and you're still surprised at how far we've gone within such a short time. Wow. I'm Seriously, this guy is just, he's the bomb. 
I mean, he is the perfect gentleman. You know, this guy just, just swept me off my feet. He swept you off your feet. <laughs> wow, give me, that's my babe. <laughs> No, but I have you to thank for all of this. I mean, you made it happen. Oh, okay, you're welcome. But babes, I must admit to you, if Andy wasn't my cousin, you'd have met him as a married man and oh. not as a bachelor. <laughs> okay, so now, am I not always the one lucky enough to end up with the best guys? I know, you can <laughs> say that again. Don't mind me, I'm just kidding. Um, babes, um, hope there's nothing you don't like about him. Nope. Come on, if there's anything, feel free. Please. Tell me, you know he's my cousin and we're very close. <laughs> Nothing, he's, he's, he's good. Olivia, you're hiding something from me. You are? Seriously? Okay, fine, fine, fine. I admit it was wrong of me to have introduced the both of you and then hop off to Spain for my summer holidays. I know I should have been around. Wait, so... wait, 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 don't, don't. don't do that to yourself. Don't, don't I mean... <laughs> I don't have any problems with that. You've not done anything wrong. Everything is just fine. Uh, it's just that, just one thing. He seems to be so much in a hurry. So, you know, want to go full length with me. Full length? You mean sex? Oh, come off it, what are you? No, of course not. We've had that a couple of times. Oh, hmm. seriously, that guy is good. Like, he is superb. Honestly, like, you know, I don't, I, I can't, I can't put it together, but he's good. You see, the thing is that, you know, my parents don't know much about him. In fact, they don't know anything about him. And my dad has insisted that he's not going to give his blessings, except that changes. I quite agree with my dad. Honestly. There's just no way I'm going to just get married today and then run off to Canada tomorrow. It doesn't make sense. And then, you know, I discussed it with him, but he doesn't seem to be happy about it. There's nothing I can do. Well, that's a non-issue to me if you ask me. Marriage is too serious a thing for anybody to rush into. <laughs> My point exactly. And talking about your family getting to know him better, he's a businessman just like your dad, right? Mm hmm What are you driving at? What other way could be better and faster for both of them to get to know each other deeper, if not through the things they have in common? Get to know through Andy if he has any business deal we can hammer out of your family. If he does, link him up with your father. You will be surprised how they'll sort things out themselves while you're away in Canada studying your doing your study and all that. Brilliant! You are a genius! You can say that again. That is brilliant! Girl, you know, sometimes you can be very tempted. Sometimes. Thank you. You know what I'll do? You know my daddy likes everything about him. His business, business, business. So, I'm just going to tweak him a little, tweak Andy a little, and I'll just get all of them together. It's going to work like magic.
What's wrong? Why did you pull over? I forgot the drugs I bought for my parents in my bedroom. <sighs> okay, how important are the drugs? Very, very important. I already told them I got the drugs. And um, I promised them I was going to come with it when I come to the village. In fact, they called me yesterday and reminded me that they don't have drugs again. And I promised them I was coming with it. Oh. You know, both of them hypertensive parents. We just have to go back. I mean, you can't afford to go without them. Oh, yeah, man. I've gone this long way. Look, it's okay. We still have time. I could help you if you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just turn real quick. Papa! Go out! When I went to the village, uh, we, the lady I told you I was bringing to introduce to you guys um, as my wife to be. Oh! oh. Good, hey. Good afternoon, sir. My daughter. Yes, sir. Good How afternoon. are you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, make up now. Papa. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, her name is Olivia. Uh, Olivia, my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Obideke. Hello, oh, it's my pleasure to finally meet you. Thank you. Finally. Very much, my <laughs> ah, uh, let, let's, let's go inside. So let's go inside. Let's go inside. <laughs> In a nutshell, as you can see, the contract is worth over $215 million. Uh, in both uh, technical and uh, commercial bids, my company came up tops, and there began our problem. So the oil company is saying they can only award me such a huge and technically challenging contract if I can show them a verifiable evidence of um, a strong partner in the US or Europe. So far, I have contacted two reputable oil servicing companies in the US, but they are giving me a rather difficult condition before they can, um, they can partner with me. What condition? You see, due to our often fragile government and um, official policies, they are insisting that I must get a strong local uh, business partner that has um, vast connections in and outside the government, you know, and um, many years of business experience in Nigeria. And that is where I think you come in, sir. Well, I see where you are going. Mm. Okay, um, Emeka, you take this and study it thoroughly mm -hmm. and get back to me. Huh? Um, if he approves of it, we'll partner with you. If he doesn't, so be it. Uh, meanwhile, are you ready to follow us to the village as we agreed last time? Oh, Chief, I came fully prepared for the job. Okay. Uh, um, Emeka, you take care of the office, eh? Uh, um, uh, we'll come back today. Okay. Have I even told you that the last time you brought your parents to my house, they were such a very vibrant and lovely couple. Thank you, sir. Everybody in my family fell in love with them at first sight. Aguchi, it's true this is my house. You are my elder brother, so do justice to the color. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to ask now, Jada, no, no, you go. I want to know you with the Lord you with him. If I go on all jab or um, I receive a good no good, a cricket and not Mamma and not that or you to go in a child and one man, I am no more now in your conno. I see to couldn't be good name or jet, I know, but I tie and even even. <laughs> Thank you for the cola. Uh, you're welcome. I'm sure you must be surprised at this unexpected visit. Actually, it's Olivia and this young man that wanted to come and visit you. I said, let me use the opportunity to come with them to know how you are faring. We are, we are doing very fine. You're welcome. Um, Olivia. <laughs> um, Uncle, Auntie, I came to let you people know that um, I'll be going to Canada for my PhD program. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's good. That's all. And also to introduce this young man here. His name is Andy. He's an American trained petrochemical engineer. He is from Newi in Anambra State. And we are getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, welcome to our family. <laughs> Baby. This is my uncle and that's my aunt. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He may see that. He may see that. <laughs> this is double good news. Uh, Olivia, young man, my son, for this double good news, I am giving you my blessings here and now. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle. Your first issue will be twins. <laughs> what? Yes. Twins. Amen. A boy and a girl. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Amen. I'm increasing it. Mine will be. I wish you four at a time. Jesus, are you kidding? <laughs> two boys and two girls. Congratulations. Thank you. And I know you will do us proud. Uncle. To be a good ambassador in Canada. Oh, okay. I know you will. Best. I know you will. I will do my best. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Why are you calling me? It's tonight. Or you have my cups in your hands, Ejike. The items are before you. Pick them up and do it. I will do as you said. If you will agree to leave the other members of the family, out. Do I still look like I'm interested in arguing over this? Do it before I count ten. Oh, I will bury this knife inside my belly. Do it. Send me against my will. I don't care. Just do it.
Just talk to us. How are they? Only the last boy survived. And he did that with serious head injuries. I am so sorry. Yeah, please, I'm so sorry. 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 I'm sorry. Just calm down. everybody at home? Uh, we're fine. Um, we're, we're okay. Um, um, baby, I think you need to take the next available flight back to Nigeria. That I should return to Nigeria immediately? What happened? Uh, not, nothing. It's not something I can tell you on phone. Just, just come back. Baby, I called my family members just before I called you. And their phones were all switched off. All of them. Please tell me, what has happened to my family? Um, 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 Suda, your, your, your family are, they are fine. They, they are fine. Um, Suda, you know, I, I have to call you back, okay? Uh, please, I'll, I'll, I'll call you back. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, wait. Yes, I'll, 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 I'll call you back. not include making Olivia trust me the more or depend on me for everything will not work out and I don't see how switching off my phone on her will help us in that regard Andy thank God you know that it is only her trust that will keep this deal alive you said you will call her of course, you will. You will call her back. But not until we have all discussed. 
discussed and agreed on what you must and must not tell her on phone and what you must do and must not do when she comes back and what all of us all of us must do in order to pull this deal through and on time so uh, what are you suggesting godfather ah eugene eugene I must not fail to commend you and Chinwe on your brilliant performance the last time you impersonated Andy's parents. And now, it seems you have to do more with what Olivia believes that Andy is to her. What happened is now a family tragedy. Both on Olivia's side and on Andy's side, and as Andy's parents, you will have to. Mommy, I'm back. Your daughter is now a graduate. Hi. I am now the ultimate head of this family and you will support me in everything. So shall it be. Thank you, Ajwani. Thank you for giving me the power for total control of this family. Wonderful news for you. What good news is that? Olivia is alive. That's not possible. The whole family died. It seems she had left for Canada before the accident. She just called me, asking me what happened to her entire family that she couldn't get any of them on phone. She said she's already on her way coming back to the country. Thank God. Thank God that women do not inherit anything in our culture. Thank God. What are you talking about? Oguchi's wealth now belongs to us. That is what I'm talking about. So, it is not about Vincent. Hi. My dear woman. Huh? Oh, you actually engineered me. To share the blood of my own, just to... Why did you think I married you? Huh? Love? Upe. Hey, Fumo. Love, Bakwoku. Me. Alu Chuku. Marry, Abu like you. Abu Alaba. Agidi like you. Upe. I married you because you told me that... A good cheese company is a joint business between both of you. And with my university degree, I wanted to use you to penetrate the heart of that business so that I can be in total control. I was almost succeeding until you came up with your stupid and useless idea of relocating to the village when your father died. You think you had your way then? <laughs> no, my dear. Oluchi only went back to re-strategize. I waited, plotted, and when the opportunity came, I, I struck. And you will agree with me that that was a master stroke. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> 
<laughs> you used me, your husband, eh, Oluchi. You even exploited your own son's death. What manner of a mother are you? A brave mother. A realist. And a woman of vision. That's what I am. Yes. You are nothing but a wicked devil. Demon incarnate. You are evil. Thank God. You did not totally succeed. Meaning, the young man Olivia introduced to us as her fiance called me before Olivia. He said that Uche survived the accident and is in the hospital recuperating now. That is not possible. You are joking, aren't you? You may have used me to destroy Oguchi and some members of his family, but mm, I swear to God before you, I swear that I will make sure that you get nothing. Olivia and Uche will get everything. Really? Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Take it easy. Don't be in a hurry to move. Wait and watch this video recording before you make the worst mistake of your life. Watch. Rose, Emeka, <laughs> Olivia, and Gucci. <laughs> oh, Gucci. Carrying all of you. Crash. And let there be no survivors. <laughs> you see what I mean? From today, you must do what I want you to do. Disobey me once. And I'll play this video recording for the elders of this village to see. You will know what the penalty for someone who did what you've done is. They will bury you alive. Ejike, you don't want to die yet. <laughs> I'm still winning! <laughs> Can't you see that? Only two will always lose. Okay, okay, come What is it? Eh? My residential house in the city goes to my wife, including all the cars. The country home in the village goes to Emeka. However, in the event that my wife and Emeka and Olivia are no more, Emeka's share should go to Uche. This will, however, be held in trust for him until he graduates from the university and completes his national service by my brother, Ejike. Likewise, Olivia's share, if I should die before she finishes her PhD program in Canada, my wife's share should be given to Oluchi, my brother's wife. Should my brother find himself unable to handle Uche's inheritance for him, he should be free to sell everything off and save the proceeds for him in the bank. The bank and card in which the proceeds should be lodged can only be assessed by Uche upon the completion of his education and national service. No one else can, not even my brother educate. The residential house in the city shall become Uche soon too if the mother dies and the maker is no more. In the event that Uche and Olivia are the only survivors, Olivia shall get everything if Uche should, be, should die before getting married. Details of what and what constitute the aggregate percentage shares as contained in this way are clearly spelled out in Appendix B of the way. Do you see so, of... Oh, so, sorry, sorry, Barrister, Barrister, please, can you... Can you just skip to the page that spells out the percentage shares details?